Well, good evening, everyone. Um, welcome to the 2016 Labor Rights Defenders Award and Isla Ruff's 30th anniversary celebration. My name is Aisha Brown, Isla Ruff's Director of Finance Administration, and this here is my esteemed colleague, Eric Gottwald. He is Isla Ruff's Legal and Policy Director. <laughs> So Judy asked us to do an informative slideshow, but um, we took creative license and we're going in a different direction. A much different direction. So tonight we decide to have a little fun, let our hair down, or some of us will be putting some hair on. But mainly we wanted to demonstrate our work through a more comedic lens. And besides, Eric gets to do what he's always wanted to do, be a powerful corporate executive. <laughs> I think you guys see where we're going with this. So tonight, ILRF staff, for the first time anywhere ever, I present our skit. Good luck, gentlemen. Mr. Drunk, <laughs> Bill, stop right there. I'm an expert deal maker. I mean, I make really good deals. <laughs> now, when you're dealing with the global garment industry, the key is you cannot let suppliers push you around. I'll tell you right now, we're paying no more than four cents per garment. <laughs> OK, but they're a reliable supplier. What if they walk? Bill. Nobody walks from a deal with Donald Trump. <laughs> they get fired. Hello? Mr. Trump, I want you to meet our new corporate social responsibility guy, Tom Dugooder. <laughs> Mr. Trump, it's so good to meet you. Tim, good I've, to meet you. I've read all your books. Yeah, I know. Tom has all this great corporate experience. He was at Nike and Unilever for more than 20 years. He's seen it all. Um, did, did oh, you wait, see wait, the wait, people wait, outside? Wait, let's get the numbers update from Bill here. I want the numbers. No justice! I no want peace. the numbers. Profits are way up. We saved over $2.5 billion by moving our production from Mexico to lower cost producers in Vietnam. That's huge! <laughs> There's just one little problem though. Workers are saying that after we pulled our orders, our Mexican suppliers shut down and didn't pay workers for the last few weeks. Wait, wait. We don't own the factories, okay? So why are we on the hook for the wages? Um, I think that might have something to do with the people out there. Justice! Give me the workplace! Give me the workplace! What? What is it? I'm sorry. Who are you people? Poorly dressed, you're rowdy. Why are you here? Justice! Justice! So, this is the International Labor Rights Forum. I dealt with them 10 years ago. They did protests at our stores all across the country. International Labor, I never heard of them. Never heard of them? Okay, can we just, can we issue the press release, the Drunk Foundation is building schools for needy children. Just get it out there. You know, we tried that. Um, they brought a tariff act complaint. Got all our shipments held up at the ports. I really think you need to talk to these people. Mr. Trump? Who are you? You don't know us? You should. Because we were the ones who put labor rights into all American trade policies. We were the ones who helped to organize a global march against child labor. Went to 106 countries, ended up in Geneva at the ILO, and helped to pass Convention 182 against the worst forms of child labor. We were the ones who found out 
and, and expose child labor in the export processing zones in India, in Pakistan, and in Bangladesh. Goodweave International, which rescued nearly 4,000 children from child labor and hundreds of thousands more deterred from the handmade carpet industry in South Asia. Then in 2000, when we discovered child slaves working in the cocoa fields of West Africa, we launched a campaign to demand a fair price for cocoa farmers around the world and an end to child labor. And in 1996, we filed the first human rights case against the corporation, Unical Corporation, for using forced slave labor. And we, we got an amazing uh, result for the victims of forced labor in Burma. And in 1997, we amended the US Tariff Act to ban the importation of products made with forced child labor. And in 2013, we used that law to stop a shipment from, of Uzbek cotton from coming into the United States at a Los Angeles port. We did that after seven years of campaigning. We launched the campaign in 2005 to end child labor in Uzbekistan's cotton fields. We helped launch the Bangladesh Accord on Fire and Building Safety. And now we're helping build a coalition of unions and feminists to advocate for women workers' leadership in global supply chains. Around the world, ILRF supports more than 25 grassroots worker organizations from eight countries. Hello everyone, I'm Yvette Herrera, I'm the president of the ILRF board. Welcome again to a special night, ILRF's 30th anniversary. ILRF has been known to do some street theater at protests but this is the first time they have taken to the stage. <laughs> Our small staff of 12 knit together a global community of organizers, campaigners, and policy experts. Please join me in thanking them while they come forward and take a bow and drink in the moment. <laughs> And now, Mr. Droff, take your negotiations off the stage, and you better pay up, because this is not a friendly crowd. Woo! 